If you're just getting started with AI, you've probably used it as a coding assistant, for answering questions, or for performing small trivial tasks. But a ton more capability can be unlocked by leveraging AI agents. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what an AI agent is and why they are useful. I'm going to explain this to you from a software developer's perspective, someone who wants to know what agents do and how to actually build real applications that leverage them. So let's get into it by understanding two key problems with traditional large language models that you've probably already encountered. Imagine you provide a prompt like this one to ChatGPT. Given the following customer's file, find all records with an address in California, sort the data descending by order ID, and only provide records where Anderson is the last name. Earlier versions of ChatGPT, that is those without agentic support, would respond with an answer like this one. Notice that this looks mostly correct, except that these records are not sorted properly as I originally requested. And herein lies one of the main issues with most LLMs. They have a very limited set of reasoning capabilities, especially when it involves multi-step instructions like the ones I provided. Now, I will say that if I had used a more modern version of ChatGPT that supports AI agents, it would have solved this no problem, but more on that later. Now, another key limitation of LLMs is the data that they have access to. In this toy example, I provided an input file containing all the required information to perform the task. But what if the information existed elsewhere, say a database or in a Google Drive folder? As it stands, my AI would be useless in that it has no ability to go and retrieve that information to perform its function. This extends to other examples as well, such as calling an API to retrieve the weather in a city. There's an infinite number of examples where what we want our AI to do requires information about or the ability to interact with the outside world. This is another key limitation in modern AI systems. They lack the ability to interact with the external world. AI agents help solve these two problems. They provide an AI with more advanced reasoning abilities to solve much more difficult problems and gives them access to external tools that they can call upon as needed. But before we go into how agents work, let's briefly talk about how agents came into existence in the first place. Agents were first conceived and popularized in a 2023 paper called Synergizing Reasoning and Acting in Language Models, or REACT for short. I highly recommend folks give this paper a read as it'll provide some more foundational understanding into agentic workflows, and I'll provide a link in the description section below. For those of you that want a quick summary, here it is. The authors of this paper acknowledge that traditional LLMs often struggle with prompts that require multi-step reasoning. Instead, they realize that if you ask an AI to break a prompt down into multiple steps, in other words, planning out its approach, it will come up with a much higher quality answer. The way the AI does this is through what's called a react or reasoning plus act loop. The loop involves taking an input and breaking it down into a multi-step plan. The model writes down what it's thinking, what it has learned so far, and what it needs to do next. For example, if I were to ask an AI to find where an author grew up, the AI might reason, I need to find an author's hometown, so I'll first search for their biography. It will then perform an action, searching for their biography in this case, before finding a result. This result is then fed back into the beginning of the loop, with the AI then analyzing the results, and if the goal of the original prompt is satisfied, it produces the final result. If the result answers the original input question, the loop is complete. Otherwise, we just go in a circle until we get our final answer. Modern AI applications like ChatGPT or Gemini have built-in agent support. You can see it in action in this short clip where the AI is taking my request, breaking down the problem into a plan, and acting on that plan to generate the final result. If you click the little drop-down beside the changing text, you can see the AI write down its reasoning as it goes. This cyclical loop of breaking down a problem into a plan, incrementally performing each step, and feeding the results forward to the next step is the key role of an agent. The implications of this ability alone are profound, 
and unlock a whole new universe of potential applications of LLMs to both software development and general problem solving. But we left out one important detail. How do agents actually interact with the outside world? That's where tools come into the picture. Tools are the glue that let LLMs access information or perform operations on outside systems. You, as the developer, specify what tools your application has access to. Using the tool's function definition and accompanying doc string of what the tool does, the LLM acquires the ability to invoke these tools if and when it finds appropriate. Think of a tool like a small piece of pre-written code that performs a certain task that an LLM can call on as needed. Let's take an example. Assume you provided your agent with access to a tool that can make an HTTP request. If you then prompt your LLM with a question, like what's the weather in Toronto, Canada, the agent will leverage the HTTP tool to make a GET request to the online source of weather information. After receiving the results, the agent can parse the response and return the final result back to you. It's important to remember that agents can only use tools that you explicitly give them access to when initializing your application. This is important because by constraining the tools available to the agent, you can in effect control the behavior of the LLM. In terms of what tools are available to you, you generally have two options. First, you can use any of the existing tools that are developed by the AI community. As you can see, there's a breadth of pre-existing tools at your disposal. You can use some to perform operations on your file system, interact with your shell, perform HTTP requests, perform web searches, and much, much more. The list is constantly growing. Alternatively, all modern agentic frameworks offer you the ability to implement your own tools for custom behavior. And all it takes is a very simple annotation or decorator at the top of a function. In fact, this is exactly how all the community built tools are developed. I developed a get customers function that takes in a SQL statement and returns a list of records. As you can see in the doc string comments, I'm giving detailed information of what this tool is intended to do, including what table it provides access to, the type of data contained in the records, and what the input and output are. Having detailed descriptions of what this tool does is very important because it allows the LLM to decide when it should invoke it or when it should ignore it. Now I use the AWS Strands Agents framework to develop this tool. And as you can see, it has the at tool annotation on it. Different frameworks like LangGraph, which is another popular one, which are also used to develop agentic applications, use a very similar, if not identical syntax. But overall, by providing you, the developer, the ability to either use existing tools or develop your own, you're giving a lot of power and flexibility to your LLM to perform different operations for your end customers. To briefly summarize, tools are the secret sauce that enables LLMs to go much beyond chatbots. Combining agents and tools are a powerful combo that enable complex reasoning abilities and the ability to actually perform necessary actions using information from the outside world. Now we've talked about the power of agents and how tools fit into this picture, but how do we actually build applications using these features? How do we ensure that our LLM uses the agentic framework to answer questions in the first place? How do we provide our LLM with information about what tools it has available? And how do we give our LLM the ability to actually invoke these tools? The answer to these questions lies in agentic orchestration frameworks specifically built to solve these problems. And as of today, there are two popular options to consider, AWS's Strands Agents or LangGraph. Strands Agents is of course developed by AWS, which means it has native integration with AWS services like Amazon Bedrock. It is much higher level compared to LangGraph. When using Strands, you give your agent access to certain tools to find the goal in the form of the input prompt and let the agentic framework and the LLM go at it to solve the problem. This makes developing prototypes and trying new approaches very simple and quick to do. In contrast, LangGraph is much lower level and much more feature rich. You as the developer define nodes and edges to give your LLM more direction. 
and you can also define branches and guardrails to prevent it from taking certain paths. Overall, LineGraph has a lot more capability, but it's harder to get started and more error prone in my opinion. If you're just beginning with agentic frameworks, I'd suggest starting with strands agents before giving LineGraph a shot once you're comfortable with the concepts. In an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to get started using strands agents. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.